Hey everybody, what's going on? So today I thought I would try something a bit differently. Instead of the very serious, uh, kind of straightforward videos that I normally do, I'm trying a bit more of a conversational, kind of laid back type of approach here, simply because I just want to see how it goes and see if you enjoy it more than my other format. So the topic for today is the lo-fi indie space rock band Duster. Now, Duster is a band that emerged in the late 1990s. They were largely overlooked during their creative peak. They're a band that, back when they were around in the, the late 90s, early 2000s, they were kind of ignored, not many people knew about them. Along came the rise of the internet that kind of resurfaced their name and they essentially found a new audience with millennials. Pretty much became a, a quintessential act from their scene, from that, that late 90s era. The record that most people know by the band would be 1998's Stratosphere. For me, personally, Duster, they're one of those bands, they have an entirely unique sound. Like with those Casio drums on Stratosphere that you can hear from time to time. The only bands I can really think of that sound similar to Duster would be bands that had members of Duster in them. Let's focus on Duster for now. So they started in the year 1996. The origins are pretty interesting. So Duster basically formed officially in 1996, but in 1993, Clay Parton, who's pretty much the mastermind of Duster. The majority of what you hear is Clay Parton and also Dove Amber. So they played together in a band called Mohinder, and that was in 1993. Mohinder was a very short-lived band, it was a very short-lived endeavor. They only released a number of EPs before breaking up in 1994. So they were only a band for about a year. Right away, it was clear that Clay Parton and Dove Amber had a lot of chemistry both musically and personality wise and so they decided to start their own project. This is what turned into Duster by 1996. 1996 the band is fresh, the band is new, and the first release we ever saw from Duster came in the form of Christmas Dust shortly after forming in 1996. Christmas Dust is a five song EP consisting of four untitled songs along with fan favorite My Friends Are Cosmonauts. It does have that underproduced kind of raw sound, but immediately after listening to it, you know this is Duster and only Duster. There is not many bands or artists that have this sound. They just, you listen to it and you immediately know that it's Duster just right away. They did that right out of the gate. Just they completely carved their own unique style of both sound wise and production wise. You could definitely hear the chemistry between Clay Parton and Dove Amber. This EP is very kind of slow core tinged, and I feel like it set the stage for what they would go on to do as a band. It did have a fresh sound for the band and for the time, with a lot of the rock music at that time being totally the opposite of this. So that same year, 1996, Duster released On The Dodge, which was a cassette of 11 songs. To me, the most interesting part of On The Dodge is there's a couple early versions of songs here that would later appear in other albums and other areas of their career. The one that most stands out to me is the early version of Gold Dust, which appears as Darby. Now, this release was the precursor to the iconic Duster sound most would associate with the band. Just like Christmas Dust, it's kind of rough, it's kind of unpolished, but I feel like it masterfully conveys the band's knack for melody. It kind of nailed down the intentional lo-fi style that has since been perfected by the band. But at this point, you could kind of tell that Duster wasn't really a project that was taken too seriously. It seemed like a means of experimenting with various sounds rather than a deliberate effort to be a band. It just was something that Clay and Dove were messing around with. They weren't quite sure what they wanted to do yet because going into 1997, we would see members of Duster develop another project by the name of Valium Agaline. That project was uh, a pretty short-lived one as well, and the band released two records, uh, Dweller on the Threshold. Their other record was a release entirely in German, and I don't really feel like butchering that, so I'm not going to even attempt to say it, but I'll show a picture of it. It featured a number of songs that would later be repackaged as Duster tracks. 
and it was a very interesting short-lived project that only further demonstrated the innovation of Duster's lineup. Duster would come to release Transmission Flux, their EP on Up Records. To me, this is the definitive moment the band really came into their own and started making exceedingly great music. There are a number of cuts here that I truly love, and it only features five songs. A very quick listen, but one that is very worth it. Cuts like Closer to the Speed of Sound are very atmospheric and emotionally resonating with some really cool, noteworthy lyrics, but to me, the closer starts will fall is just the best song here by a mile this track really showcases the most beautiful melody and guitar work duster had to offer at that point it's very introspective very poetic and it kind of reminds me of just sitting there and watching the sunset and it's one of those tracks that grips you and it makes you think about your life once again, in 1997, the band were clearly very active during this time. The band would appear on a compilation record called Up in Orbit, and I feel like this is the point Duster began to be taken more seriously by the band, and all this hard work that they were engaging in at the time would set the groundwork for their magnum opus just a couple years later in 1998. This was around the time Jason Albertini, the drummer, he would come into the picture around this time. It's not exactly clear when, but somewhere around. 1997, he would appear on their debut full-length project. Now we've arrived at 1998's Stratosphere. The band entered Avast Recording Company and their own studio, in which they still record to this day, Low Earth Orbit. They entered these studios with one goal in mind, to make their most precise, cohesive project to date. Now what we would get is an album completely existing on its own plane. This album almost completely transcends music itself, and on February 24th, 1998, Duster's debut, Stratosphere, was officially released. Now, immediately, you can tell that this is a band that has taken a lot of time to hone their craft and make something truly different, to make something truly their own. And the theme of space and all things beyond our comprehension is very consistent here and to me largely makes this a concept record but very loosely. And Duster was very known for doing this. They would write songs about space and I feel like that's another major thing that set the band apart. Not only sound wise but the topics that they covered um, were very, for the most part, unique to them. The drummer, Jason Albertini, only played on three tracks, and the majority of the record was completed by Dub and Clay, so Jason just joined at that time. You can kind of tell it has that signature Clay Parton kind of sound all over it. I would say Stratosphere is the kind of project that puts you in a trance. It sounds so smooth, it sounds airy, and just kind of out of this world, but it also boasts the emotional weight and complexity expected within their genre. And there's so many standout moments here, it would just be easier to say that the whole album is a complete masterpiece from start to finish. I can't even go over every song because there's so many terrific moments here, but I'm gonna go over some. Softer tracks like Topical Solution and The Landing make you feel like you're peacefully orbiting in space, while Echo Bravo and Read the Hillsborough are gritty and heavy. Inside Out is a deep track that many fans resonate with very strongly and one of my favorites here. And another favorite that I feel like is kind of underrated for this album at least is the title track Stratosphere. Stratosphere is a very ambient, experimental journey that grips you for the entire 7 minutes. And obviously there's many other moments of just complete musical expertise, but needless to say, pretty much the entire album is amazing from start to finish. There's really not a single moment on Stratosphere that feels weak or not up to par with the rest of the tracks. Each and every song has its place here. These songs cannot be replicated. Duster really nailed their sound to a T on Stratosphere with easily some of the best songs of their career. This album in particular sparked a legacy for the band that is still felt to this day. The band would stay busy for the next two or so years following Stratosphere, appearing on a couple more compilation albums and working on more original music behind the scenes, which leads us to what they did after Stratosphere. 
Duster would release a two-song 7-inch record that same year entitled Apex Translike, featuring the cuts Light Years and Four Hours. Released on Skylab Operations, both of these tracks are amazing in their own way. The 7-inch clocks in at less than 8 minutes, so it's a very easily digestible release. This EP was the perfect bridge between Stratosphere and their next release, which would be the 1975 EP, released in 1999. This was the time in which the band had a lot of creative juices flowing and you could tell they were working hard they were constantly writing songs now, the 1975 EP was released in 1999 on Up Records. There are six songs here, and each and every song is great. You can definitely hear past elements of their earlier work, but it's a bit different, and it gives you a good idea of the music that they would come to release next. Memphis Sophisticate is easily one of Duster's best songs to me. It's very slow, very brooding, while steady and simplistic, but it cuts deep and things parentheses are mostly ghosts is a nice tune that builds a soundscape it's very catchy and the guitar work once again is the iconic duster guitar work the closer want no light to shine takes the band in a different direction it's very slow and very somber with piano incorporated along with the spacey atmosphere the band became known for it's a very beautiful cut and reminds me of a previous closer stars will fall but it's more fleshed out and it's a great way to close an underrated ep that has the sound of their early work but takes things in a different direction ever so slightly, and to me, the 1975 EP finds a balance sound-wise. So going into the tail end of 1999, entering a new millennium, Duster once again was crafting what would become their final album. So by the time 2000 came around, Jason Albertini had become a key member of Duster. He was fully involved in the creative process, and he was a permanent member and the permanent drummer. So naturally the sound of Contemporary Movement, their second full-length album, was a bit different. And the record Contemporary Movement was released on August 22nd, 2000, once again on Up Records. It sounds more refreshed, like a produced version of Duster. It, it kind of takes things up a notch in the production department, but it's still lo-fi, it's still indie, it's still duster overall, but it's definitely a bit different, and there's not really any faults to be found on contemporary movement to me. Tracks like Diamond and Cooking are easily among the best songs the band ever recorded, especially Cooking, just such an amazing, chill song, easily one of their best songs they ever made. Both Diamond and Cooking, they boast the chill soundscapes that make you fall into a daydream that the band did so well, especially during this era. But overall, compared to Stratosphere, this album feels a lot more introspective, and that album mostly took on external topics such as space and constellations. There was still a lot of introspection and personal songs on Stratosphere, but I feel like Contemporary Movement had a lot more of it. Tracks like The Breakup Suite, Now It's Coming Back, and the closer automobile they all sound very downtrodden and heartbroken and bereft of the spaciness of earlier works but not in a bad way these cuts are very personal and reflective for the most part contemporary movement carved a different path for the band but still retained their best elements and incorporated some new ones which makes for a very solid listen duster's sophomore album proved the band had the talent to effectively progress their sound and still be compelling just like they were before the band broke up in 2001, and for no particular reason either. Clay Parton has gone on record to say, The band never fell out of touch and always talked about releasing more music under the Duster name, but life got in the way and things just kind of went dark for many years. There was no drama or internal conflicts that broke Duster up, just kind of the typical day-to-day -day struggles of being alive and being human. And I, for one, thought Duster would never return. I simply accepted it and I thought they were just a thing of the past and they left us with all the amazing music and honestly if they never reformed I would have been totally okay. They had so much good music that I could go back and listen to and I feel like many people felt the same way. You just did not think that the band was going to come back but they did. We'll get to that soon. I want to mention a number of bootlegs that were released when the band was kind of not around for a little bit for 20 years, including Experimental Dust and Low Earth Orbit. 
And then in April of 2018, Duster made it clear that they were recording new music, which made fans very happy and eager for fresh material. Eventually, this would lead to the announcement that Duster's discography would be released in a box set called Capsule Losing Contact through the Numero Group, and it was released March 22nd, 2019, and featured several previously unreleased songs. And at this point, the hype for a new Duster album was now in full swing, and fans were simply losing their shit. On July 4th, 2019, the band released a standalone single for Interstellar Tunnel, and this is a song that alienated a lot of fans. I remember reading comments on this one on YouTube, and a lot of people were like, what is this? This is not the duster we know. And I feel like what happened with Interstellar Tunnel is the band were simply trying to refine their groove, and after not playing together for so many years, I think they were just trying to get back into that groove, kind of get things rolling again. I do not think that song was meant to be taken too seriously. Either way, it's interesting, it's very experimental. The majority of fans were very excited at this point. Finally, Duster's long-awaited album came on December 13th, 2019, in the form of a self-titled release on Mudguts. For an album that was released so many years after the band broke up, it's certainly on par with their past works. No one's gonna say this new album is better than Stratosphere, but it's still really, really great, and for not being a band for that long, I truly think the majority of people's expectations were not only met, but surpassed. Cuts like Summer War and Letting Go are just completely signature duster with those soaring vocal melodies and crunchy guitars, while a cut like I'm Lost sounds like it could have been on Contemporary Movement with its grittier edge. These moments are great and call back to their iconic albums. Lomo is pretty much an acoustic ballad, along with Go Back, which is a wall of ambient sound that doesn't let up on its abrasive and almost haunting soundscape. Now, Go Back to me is one of those songs that I did not like. As I've kind of come back over the span of the past 7-8 months, it's actually a pretty decent song, but very different than the sound most people would consider Duster. Ghost World is a dark track, featuring some very heavy guitar moments and very much worth a listen. Ultimately, I can confidently say this album is a great return to form, but it doesn't hold a candle to Stratosphere or even contemporary movement. How could it though? You pretty much cannot top the genius of the band's earlier albums. But regardless, I truly believe that the new self-titled album is definitely on par with their previous albums. The album is very much a worthy addition to the band's discography. And I honestly think that even fans that weren't huge on the album are simply just excited the band is back in action after being gone for so long. And if you haven't heard this record, I highly recommend you do. So in the end, Duster are a very unique band, consisting outside of the confines of convention in rock music. Still to this day, you don't hear any bands making this truly unique, kind of lo-fi, edgy rock sound. You just do not hear this sound anymore, especially in 2020. Over the years when the band was inactive, members would devote their time to other projects. The lineup of Duster has always stayed consistent. You can tell that they've been very busy over the years working with their other projects. And here's to hoping they will stay with us this time and not bail for another 20 years. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you kind of like the new freeform, kind of almost podcasty style. If you have not heard Duster, I highly recommend you do. And they make a lot of chill, kind of vibey music. So if you're into that, definitely check it out. So yeah, uh, take care guys.